Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. Got a cast on the cards for you guys today. This one was sent into the Discord replays to cast channel. So if you want to see your replays cast, I would suggest you go and hit that place up. Drop the replay ID. Uh, if you do the hashtag as well as the replay ID, it also populates a nice little um, description of the game, which is really, really helpful. Dostia coming in clutch there let's go ahead and introduce our players we're going to call this team one up at the top this team two down at the bottom going first for team one we have maverick who is going uef opening first land you know nobody likes to really play with maverick and you know why that is it's because he's dangerous and next we've got i have no idea if that's actually true but next we've got big bang uh, who is going uef opening first land that's a top gun reference if you guys didn't pick up on it in the air position, we have Flatbread Jesus uh, going Aeon opening first land. Towards the uh, next front position, we have RO24 Triple uh, X, I believe, going Cybran opening first land. And last but not least, actually on the move right now, we've got, uh, geez, okay, we're going to call him, I don't even know, Alan. Yeah, we're going to call him Alan. I don't know how you pronounce that. Moving on to team number two, in the southernmost position, we have Akpuk, who's going to UEF opening first land, incidentally the highest rated player of the game. Next, we've got Furfur, who is going Seraphim opening first land in the next most northern front position. To the air, we have Trith, who is playing Cybran opening first land, then going second air. We have Peepadur, who is going Aeon, opening first land. And last but not least, we have Paint Thinner, who is going first and second land, third land as well, and then looking like he's going fourth air. Paint Thinner is, uh, an, interesting, is an interesting substance. I had a run-in with... So if you guys don't know, Paint Thinner... PVC primer, gasoline, some of the older permanent markers, they all had this, I don't even know how to describe it, but it would make you feel high if you breathed the fumes for a really long time. And uh, we didn't know this, me and two of my friends, and we were redoing the PVC work in a shower in an orphanage down in Mexico. As we say, Alan and Akpuk giving each other some love taps. An orphanage down in Mexico, as I was saying, and uh, we didn't open any of the doors. We, we didn't think about it. I think we were like 13 or 14 at the time. And uh, yeah, that is why I am the way I am today. It's because I had a very high dose of PVC primer from uh, a shower in Mexico. But Akpuk and Allen exchanging blows on the south. We also have got Arrow 24 on his way to reinforce his buddy. Looks like Allen was primarily interested in sniping some of Okpuk's earlier reclaim. There's a lot of reclaim on this map uh, around the edges as well as in the center and these guys are going to fight tooth and nail for it as you can see. Aro now tangling with Okpuk. Okpuk bringing in some Lobos to support. And Aro's got to keep doing the uh, doing the old shifter rooney The old jukey jukey. Dodgy dodgy. And doing a pretty good job, I think, evading almost all the shells. And I say that he eats one to the face. But Okpuk advancing pretty fearlessly here. And up to the north, we have a similar tangle between uh, Paint Thinner as well as Maverick. But we've got four or five comms here with Big Bang showing up as well in the mix uh so that would be three from team number one two from team number two with furfur and Okpuk representing team two in this and they seem to be focusing down allen as much as they can lobo is actually getting pretty good value with Okpuk's calm out in front forcing allen to reset his target priorities if the calm naturally targets other commanders allen takes a couple of lobo shots to the face now Okpuk, it, pa, uh, Okpuk is triple teamed here, and Furfur is looking to save his own skin. Okpuk dropping really low here, 1100 HP. So we throw down a land factory to try and block. There we go, that land factory will do the trick, but it's not actually blocking the shots. Okpuk dropping down to 400 HP, but Big Bang not wanting to commit. 
I think that might have been a mistake. I think, you, I think you definitely commit in that situation. He had five shots left. Might even go for... Well, Big Bang is actually one of the ringers. I was going to say, if it was me playing in this game, I would have gone for the Control-K right then and there. Just calm bomb. Sacrifice myself for the for the betterments of my team. Uh, now up north, oh, and in the south. I think I'm going to actually go to... We'll split over to split screen here so we can watch Maverick and Paint Thinner and then this very large amalgamation of comms down here in the south. As we now have Peepader showing up as well. Fur Fur now the subject of the three com abuse. But three comms from team one just having trouble getting a lock on anybody within team number two. On the right hand side of the screen, we've got Maverick dropping it down into the yellow. Paint thinner faring a little bit better at 7,800 HP. This paint thinner continues to blap tanks, and Maverick seems to be out of there. Nice little bomb over the top. Gonna pick up three different tanks there. Call that a value bomber if I've ever seen one. Akpuk means to think about getting maybe a comm upgrade here. I feel like you're asking for trouble if you're sitting at the front lines with 1,000 HP. So who am I to judge? He's literally double my rank, so... Maybe he knows something I don't. Maybe he just really likes to fly close to the sun. Alright, we can probably take it off of split screen. We'll go ahead and throw that mini-map back up there, and we'll focus down here on the bottom as Puck Puck now re-engaging with 1,300 HP. Picking his shots very judiciously, though. This little overcharge there from Furfur, dropping several tanks. We're now starting to get the full T1 spam into swing as these six players are now starting to get a good amount of tanks and artillery. It does look like Team 2 is getting the better of it, though. A lot of their T1 stacked behind their commander's Aquabuck. Still playing with fire there. I love it, love to see it, but two gun upgrades on the way. So one for Arrow, and then we've got one for Allen here. Uh, gun speed and range, gun speed and range for both of them. One is the Cyber variant, the other is the Seraphim variant. Uh, nothing too different between the two of them, but Aro could potentially pair that with a quick stealth upgrade, and that is that is rough to deal with. Not only can you not see it on radar, but it also gives you a nice little HP bump and he goes ahead and starts stealth but goes cancels it as well now Alan with a gun upgrade all the T2 comms here in the middle are vanilla the team 2 comms here in the middle are vanilla and huge amounts of spam now coming in from Alan as well mopping up Furfur's spam Peepeter's spam is next on the agenda and Peepeter Decides to go in, arms open, goes for the comm bomb, and bags. Uh, I don't think he bagged Allen, but Allen did get killed later. Peepoder is going to go down as well. <laughs> so three comms down. Haro barely escaping with his life there. That's going to be Aro and Akpuk. The only two comms kind of in that engagement, both heavily damaged. As Big Bang is in the back with a T2 upgrade and shifting towards the top again, we've got Paint Thinner and Maverick now exchanging blows, both with gun upgrades, the Zef Amp as well as the Gun Speed and Range. It's the Chronotron Amplifier, is that what it's called? On Paint Thinner. And Maverick getting himself in a sticky position here. T1 spam a little bit out of position. And he's having to focus down the T1 spam with his commander while Pink Thinner is just absolutely laying into him. That gun upgrade is a nice volley of Zooey shots come in over the top. But Maverick gets a very fortunate rank of veterancy there. But I don't think that's going to save him. I think Pink Thinner could chase him down if he wants to. 
goes down to five, four, three, two, one, and bam, you're out of here, son. And that levels the playing field to three versus three. Under 10 minutes, six com kills. What more could you ask for? It was a nice little com bomb. I think some people would look at that as low. I think of it as a sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice. Laying down your life for your friend. Or enemy. I don't know if these guys like each other or not. Some of the people that I play with, I definitely wouldn't count as, as nice people. Including myself sometimes. I'm sometimes a little bit of an asshole. Tend to care about this game a little bit too much at times. So I think we all do. Yeah, whenever you guys saw me take a break from posting a lot of... Uh, from posting a lot of gameplay videos, I'm getting back into it now, but I took a solid, like, maybe two, three weeks just away from FAF. I was getting... I did cast, but I was getting a little too, uh, getting a little too into the game, and uh, I ended up losing my temper a couple times, and I was just like, you know, I mean, it's probably time to take a step back, reset, and everything, and I'm starting to enjoy the game again as well. So it's always good. But as we look at kind of the state of affairs right now. Um, it looks like Trith is outpacing Flatbread Jesus a little bit in terms of overall mechs production. Looks like he's got most of his mechs is ringed. All of them are up to T2. And it looks like Flatbread has still got one that's just about to finish, but he doesn't have any of them ringed yet. So or capped, I guess would be the appropriate way to say it. So give an advantage in air to Trith right now as we see a strat come out. Beautiful. Beautiful Revenant. And now Aro goes for that stealth upgrade as Big Bang now moving his comm down here and setting up a little bit of a fire base. But let's take a look at this strat. He's going to bag T2 P Gen as well as some T2 Mexes. Moving on to Flatbread's base, going to bag another T2 Mex. Nice shift queuing from. Team 2's air player. Unfortunately, there are only interceptors out for Flatbread to be able to deal with it. Does have the T3 air, but no T3 power yet, so really struggling with responding to that strat in any sort of expeditious timeline as a bomb that has murdered. I had a really eloquent thing that I wanted to say there, and it, it didn't come out eloquently at all. But Strat kills a lot of engineers. Let's go with that. Uh, still relatively healthy here as uh, we do have a Transcender out now to respond. And that is going to bag that Strat. But it was four mexes as well as uh, like 15 engineer kills. So you'll take that every day of the week. So we've got another Strat now coming out. Transcenders, though, being deployed en masse, going for the T3 power. He is going to get it just in the nick of time before that shield goes up. And Flatbread Jesus is not going to be too happy about that. He's got to rebuild his air infrastructure or uh, power grid once again, whereas Trith has just got all this air time. Uh, actually, doesn't even have... Oh, no. He's got two T3 power generators. I'm just... I'm blind. Duelist blind. It's okay. It happens from time to time. But not seeing a huge concerted effort on ASF production yet. Um, I like this. Uh, so if you hover over a factory, I think this is a new addition. Um, either that or it was because I enabled additional unit stats. But uh, you can see the actual build queue that's in uh, each of these factories. So uh, we can see he's pretty heavily prioritizing bombers with uh, one strat to two ASFs. That is, a, that is a good amount of strats. He recognizes he's got that air advantage. He wants to push it as hard as he can, as long as he can. Go full throttle as another one comes out. Gonna fly over a lot of flak, though. Bag a few engineers. This time there are a couple of Coronas out, though, for 
flatbread. He is going to be able to take down the strat before it does too much damage. Outnumbered though in the skies. So both those ASFs are now going to go down and Blackbread's going to need to rebuild his air force once again. It's going from bad to worse. So we have a firebase now set up in the middle for Big Bang. And Ockpuck is responding with flapjacks. Throwing their missiles at UEF shielding. Buzz kills going up now as well. Looks like we had posturing for a push here from Aro as well against Paint Thinner. But nothing going to come of it. I always thought the concept of flapjacks was just kind of interesting. This isn't a flapjack is different. Is a flapjack different from a pancake or is that just a different name for different parts of the world? Every time I've heard flapjack, it's referring to people just like throwing the pancakes over their head and somehow magically landing them on a plate. Is that, is that what a flapjack is? So we got some bombers out from Akpuk harassing some of the reclaiming engineers as well as some of the re-engineers. Oh, that was beautiful. You gotta feel you gotta feel so bad for those engineers. They had no idea what was coming. No way to defend themselves. So Aro now comes in looking to put some pressure here on Okpuk. Okpuk throwing down several plasma cannons in response with this little bank of engineers here. Does not want these units to get into his back line. But it doesn't look like ah uh, well, it depends on whether Aro focuses it, and he doesn't, so one of the point defense does come up. But now the army is shifting in towards the middle. Mostly just mobile missile launchers and AA here for Akpuk. Does have some triads. That's going to be most of his ground-based firepower that he's going to have. He's also got a whaler coming in to help from Trit. And overall, not a super productive push there for Aro. Does bag a couple of mexes, kill some engineers, but I think he probably would have wanted a little bit more out of that push. Maybe bag some of these T2 mexes here. That would have been, I think that would have been good as well. That's oh, always good. What am I saying? It's always good to kill more mexes. At least that's what people tell me. You know. I hear that the way that you win this game is you kill the enemy commander. That's all you got to do. So I'm, I'm always curious how, how I'm so bad at it because it seems like a very easy thing to do. Just kill the enemy commander. You have a commander of your own. Just go, just go kill the enemy commander. That's all you got to do. So Flapjack's now harassing this little army for RO at range. And Paint Dinner now coming in with a couple of siege tanks in this mix as well. Nice little voice crack there, Duelist. You gotta love it. But it's not really a whole lot here for Aro to, to kind of blunt this push. Big Bang has some pillars up here that he could bring down to help defend. So we'll see what Paint Dinner wants to do. He wants to unleash his noxious fumes actually going to go down and well, changes his mind again. Makes it so hard to cast the game whenever people keep changing their minds. I just want to say, this is what's happening and then it happens, and then I look like a genius. Instead, these guys make it difficult for me. They keep changing their minds, and then I look like an idiot. Is that what you guys want? Make me look like an idiot? Yes. Aro now bringing his calm out to defend against the Othams and Ilshivas that are un coming in from Paint Thinner. Nice little overcharges. One Otham down, one to go. As the remainder of Big Bang's military comes in from the north. That should be enough to, to clean up that little push from Paint Thinner. Mostly just probing pushes right now. Nothing, nothing huge, no 
no huge commitment. Although, as we look up top, these whalers have uh, taken apart this northern base. There was a base here at one point. All these mexes were built. They are no longer built. And uh, that is that is the name of the game, is kill mexes. Like we've been talking about. It's so easy. Look, Trith is doing it. Why can't you? As damage and range comes in now for Akpuk down at the bottom. Very quick upgrade. So he's also got T3 on that commander. As he is now beginning to creep Ravagers against Big Bang. That is potentially the most disgusting thing to deal with of all time. It's Ravager creep. Actually, I don't know. If you throw a fat boy in there, that might make it even worse to deal with because you got Ravagers then covering a fat boy. The fat boy outranges a bunch of stuff. UEF are really a good faction. Yeah, that's my problem. I just need to play the fat. I just need to play better factions. Now we've got a uh, Southernus T3 heavy artillery. Now out for paint thinner, shelling some of Big Bang's positions up here. So Big Bang getting pushed in two positions right now, uh, by Arkpuck in one and by paint thinner in another. Calm on the south with the T2 upgrade right now. No gun or T3 to respond. And paint thinner having trouble getting his feet under him, or not paint thinner, uh, flatbread Jesus having trouble getting his feet under him for an air game. These whalers out of Trith are doing quite a good job at harassing these positions. We are seeing some transcenders get spammed up there from Aro. So the whalers need to be a little bit more thoughtful about how they move. Forward base though, going down, down, down town. As the pancakes now make their way out to kill the triad. And that is going to be it for Big Bang's position down in the south. Let's look at, let's check in with Eco. Let's check in with the duelist on Eco. All right, thank you, the duelist. So we've got Flatbread Jesus sitting at about 176 per tick. We've got Trith, I believe, is the chip leader for team number two. If the scoreboard would change at 263, very healthy Eco there. And then we've got Akpuk at 149 and then 105. And Big Bang actually the chip leader at 204 and then 98 there for Aro. So Aro bringing up the rear in the pack at just under 100 mass per tick, but it's to be expected. He's only got one base. I think everybody else has two bases. I think Big Bang has three. As we now see strikers moving in on this recently shelled position. Gonna murder all of the civilians on their way through. And actually, we've got bricks out from Aro. So that'll that'll be enough to that'll be enough to take that down. As we do have a good amount of salt going down in the chat. Gotta love the gotta love the salt. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I prefer sea salt. Um, now some people, some people really like the, really like the, the kind of Morton stuff that you get on the table at a restaurant. But I, I gotta say, I prefer sea salt. But if we're if we're talking about salt preferences, that would definitely be be up there. Throw that on a nice steak with a nice little bath game. Love that too. As Titans come in for Big Bang, clean up the push, the secondary push. There are some Percivals here. Uh, for Akpuk as well. We now have a laser upgrade coming for Aro. The bold strategy, sir. See how it works out for him. Curious what that is that T3 mobile? Okay, so we do have a trebuchet now. 
from Aro as well. It's going to drive back the Ravager creep, at least for the time being. I think that there's... I think that the, most of the argument is between Maverick and Paint Thinner. Maverick is angry that he lost. All right. Lasers, 50% of the way there for uh, RO. And looking down here, we do have a very healthy eco. Double cap on the way for the Mexes. Just learned that term. Shout out to Willow for teaching me that. As we have a whole bank of mercies as well uh, coming out from Flatbread Jesus. I don't think a snipe is going to be on the cards. Going to need a lot of mercies to take out Ockpuck, and he's going to have to get out from some of this. Or wait, does he have any flak? Uh, he doesn't have any flak, but he does have ASF, which are better than the flak. But we'll see what he wants to do with those mercies. Mercy, mercy, Lord have mercy. I think I was in a game last night where I think every single player on my team got sniped by mercies. It was your classic, we, it was your classic, it happened to me first, and then uh, everybody else was like, whew, okay, glad, glad it happened to him. Surely they won't do it again, and then <laughs> did it again. We were like, surely they won't do it a third time. They did it a third time. <laughs> Percival's now straying into sniper fire and will pay the price with their life. There for Big Bang. Sniper bot's such good units. So ubiquitous. And that is a that is a lot of mercies. How many mercies is that? That is 19 mercies. That is 20 mercies. like 20 mercies is that enough to take out a monkey can't remember I need to do the math what is it like 1800 damage per mercy I think so 20 yeah I mean you're getting pretty close to taking out a monkey there we now have a fat boy on the way for Akpuk so foreshadowing earlier apparently with the ravager creep combined with the fat boy everything's pretty quiet here in about 25 minutes I think everybody's just trying to eco up as much as they can. Team 1 is just trying to hang on, keep their bases from getting killed by whalers. You can see we got tons of transcenders, myrmidons, and flares all dotted around the map to keep those gunships and strap bombers out. The trebuchet's there for RO. Adventure a little bit too close to the Ravager. And they get ravaged. We got a monkey now on the way for Aro, who has finished the laser upgrade, has not gone for teleporter just yet. And then we have a GC on the way for Big Bang. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else on the way for team number one. So, team number one going for lots of land experimentals. We got an Athoda on the way for Mr. Paint Thinner. And then with the Fat Boy we already talked about there for Akpuk. And I'm not really seeing anything for Trith as of yet in the experimental space. We have quite a few Whalers as well, though. That's definitely going to be an asset whenever it comes to dealing with those experimentals. But the Fat Boy is done. Begins making its way towards the front line. All right. Trith really styling on it as far as eco goes. Up to 350, 400 mass per tick. That is, uh, that is no small amount of, of mass income there, sir. Curious to see what he kind of does with it. So he's going for a nuke launcher first off. 
Uh, got that stealth field generator up as well. And is there SMD on team number one? That is the question. Uh, I am not seeing it. If it's there, I'm not seeing it as of yet. The fat boy is now moving in. There are Ravagers here, but Fat Boy is going to be able to outrange them, take them down, chew them up, spit them out. We're trying to get some clink hammers up as well, but not quite enough. And there are a lot of parashields here in the mix. Going to need quite a few more clink hammers than that. As that Fat Boy begins its kind of slow creep forward. You always love that feeling with a Fat Boy that you can't do anything about and uh, just kind of impending doom rolling towards you. Although there are potentially the most mercies I've ever seen in one game from Flatbread Jesus. He's gonna have to get through though a lot of shielding and there are cougars back here to cover it as well. So gonna have to, gonna have to figure out something there. Deal with the fat boy. Where's our GC? GC's about halfway done. Got the monkey getting close to completed. It's gonna be good. And we do have an SMD actually from Flatbread Jesus here in the middle. What is the GC doing? Oh, it's kneeling. That's cool. I didn't realize it did that. Do they all do that? Yeah, they all do that. They all take like different different poses that's so cool I love it the GC always looks kind of like the Jaegers from Pacific Rim just much slower though I don't know so do the so do the commanders because we've got a fat boy and a monkey lord now getting ready to exchange blows monkey lord now in artillery range here Mercies come in. Some of them are able to make it through, but almost all of them get taken out. But that being said, Monkey has latched on to the Fat Boy, and that Fat Boy is going to go down. The Monkey now eating a good amount of Ravager fire, and there are a lot of Percivals back here, too. Be careful, don't want to tangle with too many of those. Monkey taking a good amount of damage now, and it's going to make for... Make like a tree and leave. Not gonna be enough though. This paint thinner now finishes up his Ethoda in the south. And Big Bang. We have a GC now from Flatbread Jesus and Big Bang almost done with his GC. Whalers coming in being put to good use there from Trith. Big Bang's GC is done. We do have another monkey queued up now from Aro. Still hasn't gone for teleport upgrade though. So rolling with rolling with stealth. And we've got mass Percival mobilization with the GC here for Big Bang. It's going to tangle with the Athoda, as well as a lot of siege tanks and sniper bots backing it up. So it is an even fight. As that nuke now from Trith is done, the SMD is right here. does have one in the tube, so that's going to be good. Black Red Jesus going to be able to, going to be able to save the day with the nuke defense there. the GC Percivals go to work against the Thoda and the Siege Tanks now. There are quite a few Southernesses back here actually as well. And that Thoda is going to go down. GC though, pretty heavily damaged. As Paint Thinner focuses everything onto the GC. Big Bang, I 
maybe looking at bringing that back and just reclaiming it and getting a new one. As the Whalers now come in for Trith to finish the job here. And there is the Coronas come in from Flatbread Jesus, but they get caught in a terrible turn by Trith with his own Air Force. Gonna be able to drop, gonna be able to get rid of the Whalers, but Flatbread is going to lose almost, again, his entire air force there. Unfortunate turn. But GC does make it back to Big Bang's base. And he does have another one that is on the way. This one looking kind of sassy there. Kneeling down, arms crossed. Get the camera shot, correct? Uh, that might be a good thumbnail. GC kneeling. Love it. All right. Another Fat Boy now completed from Okpuk. We do have a GC completed for Flatbread. He's going to send that into a Fat Boy and a lot of Percivals. There might be too many Percivals. I think that's too many Percivals as well as the Fat Boy for a GC to deal with. But he's going to give it a shot anyway. the whalers for for Trith come in once again and I think they're going to be able to get that GC not quite enough Coronas in play and he's going to lose all of his Spectres to the Gemini so we do have Coronas but kind of get a little confused there it would seem and that GC is going to go down as well now we've got Aro at least uh, now starting to starting to include some bouncers in his mix. Some of that T3 mobile AA. Team 2 definitely need it. Because we now have a Megalith done from Trith. Making its way to the front line. Not sure how much we've got in response for team number one. There's a monkey that's nearly done. And uh, we're going for Miasmas, actually. Or Flatbread on the front line. It's going for more Mercies up here. And then we do have a Megalith as well. So Monkey, Mega, GC for Big Bang. That's going to be the experimental arsenal that Team 1 is going to need to repel this wave of the Megalith and the Fat Boy. Getting some good value though from uh, either static or T3 mobile artillery. So Fat Boy taking a pretty bad hit there. Apologies if you can hear uh, my dog. I think it's just Caster's curse to have a dog. She's decided that she wants love and is now yowling outside my door. <laughs> As that badly damaged GC from Big Bang. Probably should have just reclaimed that. But that's going to go down. There's a new Athoda out for Paint Thinner. And he's got a second one on the way. As the Megalith and that newly minted monkey from Aro. Going to tangle. Getting some good support there from the Gunther Batteries. Base as Spectres now come in for... Uh, Flatbread and the Mercies. Okay, so Mercies being used to good effect there. So the monkey makes it out of it with about a quarter of its base HP. And I think that's about as good of a trade as you could have hoped for there if you're Team 1. Monkey makes it out alive. You kill the enemy's Megalith. It is, uh, it's what it's all about. Did they get the Fat Boy too? I think they did get the Fat Boy. Well, we do have a new one almost done now for Okpuk, so it's going to be a short lived victory, but it is a victory nonetheless. As so we're now starting to marshal the experimentals, we've got GC, Megalith, Monkey, another Monkey on the way, another Mega on the way, and another GC nearly done arms crossed I 
Either that or he's doing the, uh, the Jackie Chan salute from Rush Hour. At least I think it's Rush Hour. Is Rush Hour the one where it's like palm, fist to palm of hand? I feel like that's what it's for. New Nuke out from Trith, who's actually working on a disruptor as well. And that nuke is going to be going up to the north outside of the SMD range. At least the original SMD. It doesn't look like there's a second one, so Big Bang going to lose... This is going to lose a lot of T3 mexes in, in a rather in a rather big bang, which is uh, kind of ironic. Definitely not a dad joke. If I had kids, my dad jokes would be way more appropriate, but unfortunately they're not. As Big Bang experiences a big bang. All right. New push now from... Team one, Megalith leading the charge, GC and Monkey, two Monkeys actually in tow, so four experimentals there. And Okpuk, I, after that Ravager goes down, he's starting to scramble, get some point defense up. Doesn't have a whole lot though in the way of units to defend against this though. As the Whalers from Trith come in, and the Gemini shoo away the coronavirus. And flatbread Jesus. That's actually probably gonna get me demonetized. Oh well. Very mention of corona. The beer. We're not talking about any illness now. We're talking about beer. All right. Megalith moving in. Got T3 power in its sights. Taking fire though from the fat boy. Who has now actually shifted his focus to the monkey lord. Ravagers newly minted from Okpuk open fire. Begin doing huge amounts of damage to that to that monkey. The Mega begins targeting those Ravagers. Going to drop them pretty quickly. That first monkey though probably going to go down as the Whalers now move in on the Megalith. The monkeys though are in Okpuk's base. Okpuk has several RAS presets here. Where is his commander? seeing his commander. Huge amounts of T1 bombers now coming in for Trith. There is Flak and Mobile AA as the Megalith goes down. Even a broadsword out from Okpuk. Sure if this is going to be enough to finish the job here. I think Team 1 need a little bit more out of this experimental push. Not, I'm not sure where Okpuk's commander even went. I need to get that strategic icons mod reinstalled. Oh, here's Okpuk's commander. Over here, chilling with Trith. So now we got a GC out from Big Bang. Coming in again, but just dealing with huge amounts of bomber fire as well as the fat boy. Okpuk is going to lose his RAS comms. And actually in the north, we can see there was a push against uh, Big Bang's main base. GC needs to get that fat boy. Not going to do it. Fat boy survives with under 2,000 HP. This team 2 do a pretty good defense there, but they do lose a lot of Okpuk's original base there. Uh, huge amounts of reclaim, though, deposited for Big Bang. Two Ethodas from Paint Thinner. While that was going down down south, Paint Thinner pushed in with two Ethodas. Was not able to get a whole hell of a lot done, it would look like. So we now have a new monkey from Aro as well as a megalith. And Aro now going for that teleporter upgrade. 48% of the way there. And that disruptor is now done. It is targeting Flapred's base. Ba Boom. Engineers throwing together shield generators as quickly as they can. Disruptor, of course, not the most accurate of the T3 static artillery, but it is the cheapest. At least last time I checked. And uh, that's all you got, then that's all you got. All right. New push out of Flatbread and Aro, a Cybran coalition making their way down the middle. Megalith and Monkey Lord straying into this Fat Boy's. 
effective range. And bag a couple T3 mexes on the way in, always nice. As the cloud of T1 bombers now shifts and Trith mobilizes his entire military. Akpuk even with several T3 broadswords. No, he's not the air player, recognizing that air is essentially the best way as T1 bombers just begin falling out of the sky against that flak. But Monkey will go down to the Whalers and the Broadswords. Megalith might make it out here. Depends on if the Fatboy decides to decides to chase. So we have another Megalith now out from Flapred and another Monkey from Aro. Aro just the has decided that he likes Monkey Lords. That is it's his favorite unit. That is the unit that he is going to build. He's going to build a lot of them. We've got broadswords coming in. A couple of bouncers here in the back. Needs to make sure those stay in range, though, of the broadswords. Uh, looks like he's just going to sack that megalith. And broadswords take a, can take a pounding from... Uh, from T3 Mobile AA. Swipe Red Jesus, I think, finishes out another Megalith. But the artillery now shifting towards this middle base. As we now have a second disruptor online. And this is, I think, Team 1's last, last gasp here. This Mega and this Monkey, they need to, they need to penetrate. They need to penetrate deep. They need some deep penetration. Experimental units coming out left and right. Shields do break down, so that whole manufacturing facility, the Megalith factory, going down. Teleporter, 91% of the way there. That might be what Team 1 is needing here. But where do you go? Uh, you've got Trith here. You've got Tele-Defense there. Okpuk has t got Tele-Defense as well. Okpuk is also fully shielded with Tech 3, the Mega is going to go down. Ethodas coming in from the north for Paint Thinner. Let's see if Paint Thinner has Tele Defense. Does not look like he does. So could go for Paint Thinner. But the big problem here is Trith. As the Mega and the Monkey go down to the Fat Boy and the Ethodas. Teleporter completed now for Aro. Aro needs to, needs to figure out where he's going to teleport to. Calling for a scout on the ACU. Realizes that they're on the clock now. So we do have three GCs now moving in against three Ithotas. Lots of support as well from Paint Thinner. I think Paint Thinner is going to wrap this up. And Aro still figuring out where he wants to teleport to. Needs to think about doing it quickly, though. As the artillery is now starting to break through Big Bang's shielding. Assault his main base. Still hasn't decided where he wants to go yet. Some Rambo comms now making their way through. Just want to keep checking in. I don't want to miss that teleport. I know there's a lot going on. It's Megaliths taking down Ethodas. This is really this game is really crescendoed into a hell of an AC or a experimental battle. Aro still figuring out where he wants to go. I'm trying to get some scouts over. Looks like Big Bang has got a couple of scouts over. Seeing pings go out now on Trith's commander. Needs to be careful though. Needs to keep his distance from the auto guns here as another nuke goes out and all right Aro starts to teleport is he going for Trith yeah he is going for Trith okay so now Cybern ACU is going to throw down some Cybern goodness on this game and I'm so excited as 
the nuke lands uh, and is going to take out, I think, Big Bang. All right, landfall has been made. No, oh, it's in range of the auto guns. ACU is going to melt. Aro gets defeated by Okpuk. That leaves flat red. Jesus is the only player left for team number one. It's an all or nothing play there. Kind of the only trick that they had left. I probably should have gone for paint thinner instead. But what are you going to do? As flat red has next to no energy production, I don't think anymore. Nope, we still got two T3 power generators. Not sure what he's going to do though. Nope. He's gonna, as Truth was about to just drop a nuke on his face. What a game. What a game. Alrighty, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, I do really appreciate hearing from you guys as far as uh, what you guys like, what you guys didn't like. I do need to get the Strategic Icons mod back. I'm not sure what happened to it, but it died. It fell over and, and died. I'm not sure why. Um, so we'll get that fixed for you. If you guys want to see replays cast, best places to do that are either message them to me directly or put them in the FAF Discord, the replays to cast section. Double check and make sure that there are no desyncs. A uh, game can desync even if it doesn't desync in game. So if you're playing the game and there's no desyncs, there can still be a desync whenever we actually go back and load the replay. It can be because a player alt F4s or quits out of the game and the game can't be, can't handle it. Sometimes it can happen. So please, 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 please watch them back. Check for any desyncs in the games. Um, outside of that, guys, I think I'm going to go make another cast at this point. So look for that in the future, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.